Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now there was a certain man who was ill, Lazarus. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God the one who who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep, so the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Please be seated.
we began with those very famous words from Ezekiel. And just as we begin the sermon, we'll just listen to a little piece of music to remind us of those words that Haley will play for us. Ezekiel connected them, dry bones, Ezekiel connected them, dry bones, Ezekiel connected them, dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. Well, your toe bone connected to you, foot bone, your foot bone connected to you, heel bone, your heel bone connected to you, ankle bone, your ankle bone connected to you, leg bone, your leg bone connected to you, knee bone, your knee bone connected to you, thigh bone, your thigh bone connected to you, hip bone, your hip bone connected to you, back bone, your back bone connected to you, shoulder bone, your shoulder bone connected to you, neck bone, your neck bone connected to you, head bone, now hear the word of the Lord. A dim bones, dim bones gonna walk around a dim bones, dim bones gonna walk around a dim bones, dim bones gonna walk around now hear the word of the Lord. Disconnect them bones, them dry bones, disconnect them bones, them dry bones, disconnect them bones, them dry bones now hear the word of the Lord. Well, you hear but them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Very famous passage from Ezekiel. I'm sure the most famous passage from Ezekiel. Probably most people have never heard any other part of Ezekiel and didn't know those words even came from this book. But those bones, those bones, those dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Life, breath, wind, spirit, all intimately connected together in the Bible. In Greek and Hebrew, the word for breath and wind and spirit is the same. So whenever we see the Spirit of the Lord, it could mean the breath of the Lord or even the wind of the Lord. So Ezekiel was led into the desert to see dry bones. We don't know where exactly it was, whether it was a real place or just part of his vision. But he saw bones lying all over the ground, human bones it seems, so probably bones from a battle, bones after some sort of fighting. When I lived in Egypt, I used to sometimes go horse riding out by the pyramids and it was great on usually a Friday afternoon to get out of the city and to be able to gallop through the desert and out of the pollution you could see over Cairo, but we would be in the open air. It's said that there were 3,000 horses stabled near the pyramids. The number's gone down now because of all the trouble and the lack of tourists, but there were up to 3,000 horses there. And some of the stables were good, and some of the stables were not quite so good in looking after their animals, and some would actually use them until they dropped. And it was not that unusual to see a dead horse lying on the sand. And sometimes you could tell it's not been there long because flies would be gathering and and there'd be a slight smell of, of decomposition, but quite quickly the bones would appear. You see the rib cage picked white by, I guess, desert foxes and other animals would come out, and again the ants would be crawling all over it and the flies, and, and very quickly there would just be bones and pieces of mummified skin as it dried out in that very dry desert atmosphere. They were lifeless, these bones. White bones picked to dry, and you were riding on a horse which was full of life and full of energy and you could see how quickly things could change. So Ezekiel was in the desert and he saw these dry bones and God asked him a question. Can these bones live again? And of course, Ezekiel gave the right answer because he said, only you know, Lord. And what did God say? He said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. 
so that you know that I am the Lord. The life comes into the bones as God puts his breath within them, as God puts his spirit, as God puts his wind within them. And as the vision goes, he says, I prophesied as commanded. And suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together. The bones moved. The bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, but still there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And so as we see the wind just moving gently in the trees this morning, we can think of the breath of God, the Spirit of God which is moving. This idea, this concept of breath and wind and life and spirit goes all the way through from the beginning of the Bible in Genesis to the end in Revelation. In Genesis, God makes Adam out of the soil and breathes his breath, his spirit, into Adam to give him life. And then right at the end in the book of Revelation, two witnesses are seen dead and then God comes back and renews them again. Revelation 11, verse 11. But after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and those who saw them were terrified and he called them up into heaven. So we have all the way through the scriptures this idea of breath of God coming in. Now Protestants, modern Protestants are very much into really a theistic God. A God who is transcendent. A God who is quite a long way different from us. God is holy other whereas we are the created. God is holy. We are sinful. God is perfect whereas we are are fallen. And yet there's another thread running through the scriptures, which is the idea of all life coming from the breath of God. Psalm 150 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And it's talking not just of human beings, but of animals and perhaps even, you could say, trees as they also respire and take in oxygen and, and do all the things which we might count as breathing perhaps. What about us? Do we have the breath of God with us? Do we have the spirit of God moving amongst us? Do we feel the wind of God's power cursing and coursing through us? Sometimes it can be a bit discouraging when we are few. Sometimes we feel like, how long, O oh Lord, till, till things really start to happen? We should not measure our success in how many people come or as we gather in English speakers from Chiang Mai. That's not why we're here to count numbers, but sometimes it can be discouraging when the numbers seem to be few. But why do we come to worship? Why do we turn up on a Sunday week by week into God's presence? Well, I believe we should come, yes, to worship God, to glorify God and to give thanks for all that God has done for us, but also to receive his breath within us to receive his spirit into our spirit, to receive his wind blowing and enlivening and changing our lives. We should not be discouraged. We should be renewed and encouraged. And as we meet here for the last Sunday in Lent, we look forward to the coming of Easter. So we need to ask God, for his spirit to be amongst us, for his spirit to be working in us. We need to wait in silence sometimes, knowing that God is here. Not that God is only with us and not with other people, for I believe the spirit of God blows through the whole world. It says very clearly that the spirit blows where it will, and we don't control where the spirit of God moves. The wind of God moves through all people as, as he sends his spirit and his breath to bring life. 
and yet we should be meeting here each week to receive more of God's Spirit. To just let God breathe into us more. To let that wind blow us where it will. God is one for all people. And we need to be open to, to share God's love with all. But that's a natural thing, that as God's Spirit comes through us, we can do that. Yesterday, or the day before, was the big, a big storm, and the trees, which are now slightly blowing in the breeze, were rushing about, and leaves are pouring down, and things are falling. And you could see the power of the wind. And though sometimes we experience God as a small, quiet voice, sometimes God's breath seems very, very gentle. Yet we have a mighty God who can do mighty things in the power of his wind, in the power of his spirit. So what I want us to do this morning is spend a few moments in silence as we think about and ask God's spirit to be with us to come into us, to guide us. And then we'll ask that God gives life to each one of us. So that as we carry on with our worship this morning, the words of the liturgy which can just become dry bones, if that's all they are, if they're just words on a page, that God's Spirit can move through, God's breath can enliven our hearts so that we know His presence with us, and so that, like Ezekiel, we can see those dry bones, wherever part of our lives feels dry, we can see that renewed by the Lord. Amen.